emissions are still going up. All these promises of the last few years to cut emissions, emissions are still going up. People are familiar with that thin blue line that the uh, astronauts bring back in their pictures from space. That's the, that's the part of the atmosphere that has oxygen, the troposphere, uh, and it's only five to seven kilometers thick. That's what we're using as an open sewer. If you could drive a car straight up in the air at interstate highway speeds, you'd get to the top of that blue line in five minutes. And all the greenhouse gas pollution would be below you. We're still putting 162 million tons into it every single day. And the accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day on the Earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. Mm. And that was former Vice President Al Gore at the World Economic Forum. It was striking to hear Gore's message in fiery tone as he was literally pleading with global leaders to do more to save the planet. Gore tied in climate change with the growing threat of authoritarianism and fascism. Indeed, it now appears that on top of more weather catastrophes, killing tens of thousands of people and costing hundreds of billions of dollars each year, the climate crisis is sparking mass migration, and that in turn is adding to the migrant hatred and fueling anti-democratic political upheavals. These are scary times, and they are going to get worse. Unfortunately, the visuals coming from the global elites in Switzerland make their concerns reek of hypocrisy. They travel to Davos, Switzerland in an uh, armada of private jets. In fact, over a thousand private aircraft, most carrying no more than two to three people, crowding the airspace over the tiny Alpine resort town. And according to Yahoo News, the, quote, the carbon dioxide emissions from these extra flights is equal to putting roughly 350,000 gasoline powered cars on the road. And get this, nearly 40% of those jets, they were coming from less than 310 miles away, which is only a couple of hours if they took a car, or a bus, or a train. Now, I don't believe Sean Hannity really cares about climate change, but his point about double standards and the reporting he cited from Yahoo is spot on. And even climate change activists at Greenpeace are bewildered by the lifestyles of the elites attending the World Economic Forum. And on top of the personal hypocrisy, there are the global policy inconsistencies that global leaders have been promoting. One of the top polluting countries on Earth is China. But China's coal plants and CO2 emissions have been exempt from climate change enforcement because China is regarded as a developing country. It's the same thing with India. Now, to be fair, the United States still accounts for roughly 25% of all the global emissions getting pumped into the troposphere. So our CO2 and greenhouse gases are a leading problem. But the United States isn't the only problem. And until global leaders tackle the climate crisis with some international equity and stop displaying rank hypocrisy in their own behaviors, drastic emission reductions are going to remain elusive, at least politically. Plenty of Americans, for example, across the political spectrum are not going to buy in until our own leaders show more personal responsibility and sensitivity. Furthermore, as long as wealthy corporations maintain their stranglehold on our corrupt politics, there will be no cost to these companies for continuing to dump their pollutants into the atmosphere. When there is little punishment for wealthy corporations, it's difficult to ask individual Americans to sacrifice more. To be clear, Al Gore and others have the right message and urgency. And to the extent Gore was speaking to global leaders in Switzerland, his speech was important. But if anybody is trying to reach citizens around the globe with the message that we must take drastic actions now, the World Economic Forum is not a helpful messaging platform. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.